Have you found yourself traveling through a storm? Are the waves of the ocean smashing down upon you? You may not understand it yet, but there are miracles on the other side of your shipwreck. What do I mean by this? Let me give you a real brief summary of what happened in Acts 27. Paul has been captured from the Jews in Jerusalem and is now on his way to Rome to plead his case in front of Caesar. Paul tells the centurion in Acts 27 verse 10 saying, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. Verse 11 says that the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and the owner of the ship than what Paul said. And Paul obviously has prophetic knowledge from the Holy Spirit about the trip to come. So now we fast forward down here to Acts 27, 13, this storm at sea. Now, when the south wind blew gently, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed anchor and sailed along creek close to the shore. But soon a tempestuous wind called the Northeaster struck down from the land. Now they're caught in this crazy storm. And when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. Now this might sound like your life right now. You have lost control completely and the wind is just blowing you all around, whichever way the wind will blow and you can't control the ship. I understand how you feel. Let's keep reading. Running under the lee of a small island called Kata, we managed with difficulty to, to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they used supports to undergird the ship. Then fearing that they would run aground on the Sirtis, they lowered the gear and thus they were driven along. You're still being driven along, still being driven by the wind. You still can't find heads or tails. Since we were violently storm tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. They're throwing the cargo over the board, trying overboard, trying to gain some control over this ship. Now we're going to fast forward down here to Acts 27 verse 24, uh, or actually 23. For this very night there stood before me an angel of God to whom I belong to and to whom I worship. And he said, do not be afraid. Paul, you must stand before Caesar and behold, God has granted you and all those who sell with you. So take heart, men, for I have not for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. So this uh, angel of the Lord has come to Paul and told Paul, you have no reason to fear because you will stand for uh, stand in front of Caesar and plead your case. So therefore, everyone with you is going to survive. But in order to survive, you must run aground on some island is what it says, but we must run aground on some island. And so I'm going to fast forward to verse 28, which is where, which is where the culmination of all this uh, comes to, to head. So the blessing of this is going to come in verse 28. So they land on Malta and the native people showed them kindness and they started a fire for them. Well, Paul's putting sticks and, you know, kindling and firewood in the fire and a viper comes out and bites him. Now, the people think that Paul is a murderer that escaped death on the sea, but now he's getting justice served to him by the viper that bit his hand because that's just what their, you know, folklore spoke of back in those days. But Paul doesn't die. They're waiting for him to fall over or swell up or suddenly fall out and die. This never happens. So now they're thinking he's a god. This isn't the case, though. So it goes down to verse tw uh, 28, verse 8. It happened that the father of Publius lay sick with fever and dysentery, and Paul had visited him and prayed, and putting his hands on him, healed him. And when this had taken place, the rest of the people on the island who had diseases also came and were cured. They also honored us greatly, and when we were about to sell, they put on board whatever we needed. So here we see a couple of things happen. Paul is went to go pray for this man, Publius' father. It says here that Publius is the chief man. So this would have been a formal title of someone with much stature at that time in the land. And so Paul going to pray for this man's father is a big deal because not only is it going to allow others to see this miraculous healing through Paul, but it's also going to allow them to get healed. I wonder if it was the same hand that Viper bit that he laid hands on Publius' father and healed him with. I wonder if it was the same hand that he laid on the, the people in the village and actually healed them as well. In our life, when we face these challenges, we don't always see the miracles that are going to happen on the other side of the shipwreck. If Paul wouldn't have run aground and crashed his ship on the island, he would have never been able to lead all these people to healing. And I wonder if they got led to the Lord. I think it's a, a, a powerful example of what God can do 
through something that we see as a struggle, as a challenge, as a shipwreck, as a storm, what God can do through that. Look at the, the miracles that's happened on the other side of that. And that's what I felt like when I was in prison. How can any good come from me going to prison? Well, fast forward to a couple of years upon my release when we went to Columbia, South America, and I spoke in a men's and women's prison, uh, juvenile detention center and uh, trouble uh, a school for troubled children. And we led over 700 people to the Lord. I didn't see any, any benefit from me going to prison except for me getting salvation. But these people heard my testimony that the Lord gave me and were also led to the Lord then. So we may think that our struggles, our challenges, our relationships having, you know, ups and downs, the waves crashing all around us. We may think that there's no benefit to that. But I wonder what we're discounting as a waste or we're discounting as a challenge that we would rather God just remove from our life instead of walking through that and getting strengthened by the Lord, leaning on him and not on our own understanding to be able to give God all the glory through it when we make it through. Because trust me, God is good. He will see us through whatever challenges we face. Then we must reach down and help those that we know that are also going through that same challenge and try to lead them to a better way of life. Try to lead them to the Lord. Try to lead them to a better understanding of why they are also going through that challenge. Because through that breakthrough comes the wisdom and the knowledge to know to not do that again. And the Holy Spirit is good. The Holy Spirit is faithful. He'll guide you through it. He'll, he'll help you. God sent an angel to, to Paul to tell him, you have to go speak in front of Caesar. So take no fear. You guys are going to make it. We're going to make it. You will make it through your storm. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. Let the Holy Spirit give you wisdom and try your best to lean on the Lord through this time. I really hope this message has encouraged you. I really hope that you guys are doing well today. That's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. God bless.